I love toys. I mean, seriously, how can you not? They invoke the inner child in all of us. Wind-up toys, vinyl figures, video games, candy, jewelry. But for me, yo-yos are kind of my thing. I say all this because about three months ago, or 20 years in pandemic time, the owners of one of my favorite dessert places in the city announced that they were closing. Toy Boat Cafe, the little corner dessert shop on Clement, known for their eccentric collection of toys, has been around for almost 40 years and as the sole ice cream shop in the neighborhood, has brought at least a small amount of joy to nearly all that have visited it. So to hear it was closing was heartbreaking. But that's where the story takes a turn, because as it turns out, owners Jesse and Roberta Fink were planning to retire and hopefully find a new owner to keep the boat afloat, as they said. After the news broke, the shop lay dormant for weeks. I stopped by to take a look inside and everything was still the same. Counters and chairs were unmoved, the toys still displayed on the mantle, waiting. Rumors swirled around who would buy the business. My biggest hope was that it would be somebody who would keep the spirit of Toy Boat alive and not turn it into some kind of soulless, run-of-the-mill coffee shop. As luck would have it, the owners of Jane the Bakery had bought it. They operated a few cafes out in Western Edition and the Tenderloin, including one located in a former KFC building whose bucket outside in the parking lot they just painted over with black. Totally metal move right there. I love it. But what really put me at ease was their commitment to keeping Toy Boat the same for the sake of history and the neighborhood. It's a special place for a lot of people, and it almost seemed like a miracle that someone with the same set of values and adoration for the place wound up as the successor. That someone, by the way, is Amanda Michael, owner of Jane the Bakery and San Francisco native. She grew up going to Toy Boat and, since taking over the business back in July, has been vocal about her insistence on keeping it intact. And now, after a summer's worth of secret renovation, Toy Boat version 2.0 is ready. Let's go check it out. So what do I think? Well, aside from there being no tables or chairs inside, it's mostly the same. The toys are still on the shelves, they still serve the same kind of ice cream. I was able to get my old favorite, it's a goodie. And of course, Butterscotch, the mechanical horse, is still rocking for all the children out there. But I know that people will look at this and say that it's just not the same anymore. The thing is, it never will be. I believe it's just all part of Toy Boat's evolution. I think we all know how hard it is for restaurants to remain the same after ownership changes, but I think if we take a step back, we can appreciate that it's possible for a business to be passed on and for its soul to stay intact. And I think we're lucky to have that with Toy Boat. Look, all I'll say is nostalgia is a fickle mistress. If even a hair is out of order, the feeling gets warped and it all kind of falls apart. But to take over a place so beloved during a time when it's becoming increasingly hard to own and operate any restaurant and to retain even a tiny bit of what it used to be, now that's an accomplishment all in its own. I think it takes guts to say, no, this place is important to me, to this neighborhood, and I want to preserve its soul for future generations. On a more personal note, Places like Toy Boat are what keep me afloat. It's that cultivation of playfulness and acceptance that permeates the community that really does it for me. And also the mantra that nobody is ever too old to have a little bit of fun. I mean, why else would I still have this ridiculously massive collection of yo-yos? My love for these places play a huge part in how my silly little hobbies shape the person I am today. And it's why I'll probably never stop playing with them. So hey. Thanks, Jane, and welcome to the neighborhood.